Ladies, gentlemen, rail bikes and rail cars, welcome to Rank 10 Yu-Gi-Oh's Legacy of the Worthless 1000 Sub Special. After that god-awful meme fest video about Pot of Greed, it was finally time to fulfill my promise and reveal to you guys what exactly I consider the most worthless archetype of all time. Blah blah, 5 categories, watch the other videos. Let's immediately cut to the chase and not make you wait any longer. It's Gen X. I know it's not a very suspenseful or exciting beginning, but long story short, it's most likely the largest archetype I will ever feature in this series, so it's in my best intention to get it out of the way as fast as humanly possible. Once again, it's a dual terminal archetype, fitting between the lore of... our favorite archetypes, Worms and Allies of Justice. If you're immediately terrified by the obnoxious length of this video, the reason for that is actually not Gen X having tons of handy monsters and spell and trap support, but because they're divided into three sub-archetypes. However, unlike Nordics, who at least had the decency of keeping their three monster categories narrow and concise, as well as making them keep the playstyle of the deck, Gen X feels like Konami made an archetype, didn't like it and then scrapped it, then immediately afterwards they remade it for slightly more consistency, but it ended up being shit again, then completely reworked the entire playstyle of the archetype into slow, unplayable gimmicks, and coincidentally that didn't work either, and Gen X were finally left to die in peace without their corpses being dug up and pissed on for the third time. So let us start off with the first and also the largest branch, simply named Gen X. Strangely enough, it focuses on this little thing, a level 3 normal tuner named Gen X Controller. Now, decks focused around a single normal monster aren't exactly anything unique, although they never really seem to get anywhere when it comes to competitive viability. But as far as this monster goes, it's not exactly bad, it has decent stats for level 3, which is also a pretty good level for a tuner, and it's usable outside its own archetype in stuff like... I don't know, enchanting fitting room turbo. So yeah, off to a tolerable start, and that's as far as we go. Further proving that Konami really wanted you to make the most out of this thing, we have Gen X Recycled, a level 1 tuner with terrible stats that, once per turn, lets you treat its name as the name of a Gen X monster in your graveyard until the end phase. When it comes to archetype support cards that can change their own name into the name of some monster said archetype is based around, you kinda wanna have that renaming effect usable immediately, as opposed to already having that monster present somewhere outside your deck. And if you think this is fine because it's a level 1 tuner, I'll have you know in advance that you don't really want level 1 tuners if you wanna do anything with this deck. Next up is Gen X Power Planner, and oh boy, it's a searcher! Those are always nice, right? What's your favorite searcher? Mine is Stratos, and I cry myself to sleep every night. Anyway, it's another fragile level 1 that, when normal summoned, lets you search out a level 3 Gen X effect monster, emphasis on effect, meaning you won't be fetching yourself an easy controller with this thing. Admittedly, there are a few decent level 3 Gen X effect monsters, but please consider the fact that you're leaving a 300 attack monster out on the field in face-up attack position for your opponent to curb stomp, just so you can make a little measly search. However, we'll come back to this card as well as Gen X Recycled a bit later on because of a certain set of monsters in the second branch that have some interesting interactions with these two. Also, Spellcaster? Where? What? You mean this thing? That That's not a Spellcaster, it's a robot thing, dude. Is this a Spellcaster? Sure as hell doesn't look like one, how is this a Spellcaster? Next up is, coincidentally, a level 3 tuner and yet another replacement for controller. Once per turn, if you control another Gen X monster, you can make this card's name be Gen X controller until the end phase. So, the only benefit of this thing even existing is that it's searchable by Power Planner, and that's about it. I mean, it's kinda better than Recycled, but unless you're actively running a certain Gen X variant I'll get into later, as I previously mentioned, Spare is an extremely niche card to even consider running. However, I'm gonna give it credit, that artwork is really pretty and melancholic. Kinda reminds me of Wally, -E, great movie. Following that, we have some amazing protection in form of Gen X Gaia. It's a level 3 with 1000 attack and 1900 defense, and if it would be destroyed, you can destroy one Gen X controller you control instead. So, you can either get rid of a mediocre wall or your primary playmaker. Take a pick! Seriously though, I'm not sure what they were thinking with this one. If anything, this is the type of card to say, if Gen X controller will be destroyed, you can destroy this card instead. But no, Gaia feels he's too important to leave the field, the greasy piece of sh. Now here's a card many of you may be familiar with, Gen X Undyne. 
No, Anna, I am not going to make an Undertale reference, although I think I just did. Anyway, when Undyne is normal summoned, you can send one water monster from your deck to the graveyard to add a Gen X controller from your deck to the hand. Pretty much the only way to directly search controller, Undyne is a definite 3 off staple in any basic Gen X deck, but it was also widely played in Atlantean Mermails to dump Atlantean monsters into the graveyard as well as making the occasional Synchro, however it was entirely replaced by the way better Neptabyss and with that rendered completely irrelevant outside of dedicated Gen X decks. It's not exactly a bad card because searching out your main monster is undeniably a good effect, but the synergy it had with Mermails is simply the accidental result of its weird water monster dumping cost that feels like it was tacked onto the card just so it would have some kind of cost in the first place, as opposed to making it synergize with its own archetype. Next up is a quick one, Gen X Worker. It's a level 3 that you can tribute a special summon a Gen X monster from your hand. God knows why, because the few tribute monsters that they have are complete garbage, and none of the low level ones really benefit that much from hitting the field specifically by special summoning. Now usually I would skim over garbage like this, but I gotta point out the stereo system on this guy is on point. But you know what he needs? More of this dude. After that we have more level 3s with Gen X Doctor. His effect allows you to tribute one Gen X controller to target and destroy one card on the field. Alright, where the hell did that cost come from? I was under the impression this thing was important for furthering your plays rather than being used as ammo for the world's slowest BFG. But oh, it's not once per turn, so that immediately makes it good, because Gen X are just so good at swarming the field with controllers. Except, you know, they're not. Seriously, if this is their doctor, Gen X must have worse healthcare than North America. At least over there you don't get fired out of a fucking cannon if you go for a tooth checkup. Oh, and it's also a spellcaster, because hmm. And our first level 4 is Gen X Turbine. It has 1400 attack and gives all Gen X monsters a 400 attack boost. That's literally all it does. B -b 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 -power! The next one is Gen X Searcher, and it has a somewhat decent effect. When it's destroyed by battle and set to the graveyard, you can special summon a Gen X monster from your deck with 1500 attack or less in face up attack position. In a way slower format, this was a pretty decent way of digging through your deck for the monsters that you need to make plays with. However, a big flaw that Gen X Searcher has when compared to other generic attribute and type searchers is that it doesn't float into itself because it has 1600 attack, so it's either summon the combo piece or bust. Although I am giving Gen X a bit too much credit saying they have something that could be considered combo pieces. Next up is Gen X Blast Fan, a level 4 spellcaster with 1600 attack and when it's special summoned you can add one dark Gen X monster from your deck to the hand. Oh, so that's what Worker is for. Consistency. Oh, and Searcher cannot summon it because it has 1600 attack. Thanks for the effort Blast Fan, but I think I'm just gonna stick to Undyne if I wanna search controller. Next is a very, very unusual occurrence, a relevant Gen X monster. Gen X Neutron is a level 4 with 1800 attack and during the end phase of the turn in which it was normal summoned, you can add one machine type tuner monster from your deck to the hand. Slow? Definitely, but the search range is actually extremely wide since it can fetch literally any machine type tuner monster, including classics like Quick Draw, Jet Synchron, Unknown Synchron and of course Controller. It also has a pretty good body for level 4 and it was even a part of the Synchron Extreme structure deck. So considering Gen X standards, which are, to be fair, insanely low, this guy gets a pass. And those were all the level 4s. Well, that was nice, a whole one and a half playable monsters. Our next subject of interest is Gen X Furnace. I'm sorry, but you could have picked a more appealing name rather than fucking Furnace. Why don't we just add limbs onto other household devices and have Gen X Fridge or Gen X Air Conditioner or Gen X Bear Trap? What, you don't keep bear traps in your house? Well, guess your life is easier than mine, isn't it? Anyway, Gen X Furnace is a level 5 with extremely mediocre 2000 attack and if you control a Gen X controller, you can normal summon it without tributing. Now, not only would this still be terrible if it said any Gen X monster instead of controller specifically, but the only purpose of this thing even existing is to tune it with controller and summon a certain underwhelming level 8 synchro. God forbid it said you can special summon this card, that's tier 0 shit right there. So, for all it's worth, Gen X Furnace can burn in hell. Alright, next up is Gen X Army. It's a level 6 with 2300 attack and when it's tribute summoned by tributing a Gen X monster, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. This one frankly fascinates me because I rarely ever see this amount of sheer non-understanding of what your own archetype is focused on doing. Most other cards, as bad as they were, were either focused on searching out controller or enabling synchro plays. But completely out of fucking nowhere comes this pointless, fragile, slow and downright ugly piece of crap. Not to say that the other Gen X cards weren't fragile and slow, but for most of them you could at least kinda figure out the idea behind them. Gen X Army, on the other hand, is so out of left field it's hilarious. 
And the final branch 1 main deck monster is the level 7 Genex Solar. It has 2500 attack and you can normal summon it by tributing one Genex monster. Each time a face-up Genex monster you control is sent to the graveyard, it burns the opponent for 500 damage. Much like with Genex army, I am having quite a bit of trouble trying to figure out the purpose of this thing. Maybe whoever designed this was under the impression that Genex are super fast and consistent so that Solar would keep burning the opponent whenever you synchro summoned by using Genex monsters, but as far as we found out so far, that is not the case. And well, the tribute summon cast is the cherry on top of the unplayable cake. Genex Solar? More like... Genex so large it hurts... The, the deck... And finally we get to the synchros, sadly things don't exactly improve from here. We start off with the level 6 Geo Genex, summoned by tuning specifically controller and one or more non-tuner earth monsters. It has 1800 attack and 2800 defense and the following effect. Once per turn, if you control a face-up level 4 or lower Genex monster, you can switch the original attack and defense of this card until the end phase, for as long as you control a face-up level 4 or lower Genex monster. So, let me level with you here for a second. You can either go out of your way to synchro summon a monster by using a very specific tuner and a very specific non-tuner, then if you still control a low-level Genex monster, you can make this thing's attack be 2800, but only until the end phase, and if said low-level monster didn't leave the field during that turn, or you can just summon Goyo fucking God. Guardian. And you know what? Goyo Guardian wasn't even banned when this thing came out, but like 6 months later. And even if it was still banned, I can tell you for a fact that nobody in their right mind would see this as a suitable replacement for it. Next up, another level 6, Hydrogenex. It's got 2300 attack and as expected, it requires controller and a water monster to synchro summon. When it destroys a monster by battle, you gain life points equal to that monster's attack. I mean, it's not terrible or anything, it's just that this effect isn't exactly meaningful in any way. You might get a decent heal off of this thing, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Once it leaves the field, the life point bonus becomes irrelevant. Sadly, this is also one of the very few first turn plays available to Genex because of Undyne's searching capability and the existence of double summon. The level 7 is Windmill Genex. It has 2000 attack, requires controller and a wind monster, gains 300 attack for each face down spell and trap card on the field. Also, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy one face down spell or trap card on the field. While not exactly great, it's easily the least bad of the four branch 1 synchros because of the back row destruction effect that's not once per turn, even though the discard cost is so steep that you'll rarely ever get into a situation where the effect will be usable more than once. So while not terrible in theory, it's still a pain in the ass to summon and use effectively. Ending the first branch is the level 8 synchro Thermal Genex. It has 2400 attack, requires controller and a fire monster, hint hint, gains 200 attack for each fire monster in your graveyard, and when it destroys a monster by battle, it burns the opponent for 200 for each Genex monster in your graveyard. The fire monster graveyard boost makes me think if Konami actually wanted controller to be splashed into other attribute specific decks, because most you would get out of this thing when playing it in pure Genex's 2600 attack tops. The burn effect isn't that good either, because if you actually manage to summon this thing, it usually implies that you're already winning, meaning you won't really have many more Genex in your graveyard other than the ones you use for the Synchro Summon. Also, Thermal Genex and Windmill Genex, while the previous two were Hydro and Geo Genex? What kind of naming convention is this? They should probably just rename these into Water Pump Genex and BP Oil Spill Genex. And that was the first branch of this amazing archetype. Yeah, to put it lightly, it's not quite the best, is it? In fact, you know what they heavily remind me of? Neo Spatians. Yeah, remember those? It's all there. The key normal monsters, several monsters of various attributes you're supposed to combine it with to get the extra deck monsters with effects of varying quality, as well as a bunch of crappy searchers. And if you were to go full Yu-Gi-Oh GX, throw in a couple of irrelevant, inconsistent bricky monsters as well. If you're wondering why I'm not covering the spell and trap support, well, much like Allies of Justice, it's because there is none of it. But hey, now that we're approaching the second branch, maybe Genex will find a way to redeem themselves in the eyes of the people by making their support act as actual support. And you know what? They sort of do. Well, let's take a look. The name of the second branch is R Genex, which according to the lore stands for Real Genex. Oh, oh, so the last ones were fake? Oh, that actually explains a lot. They consist of 9 monsters, and 3 of them are very important for a certain combo I said I was gonna talk about a while ago. Argenex Crusher is a level 2 that allows you to add a level 4 Argenex monster from your deck to the hand when normal summoned, Argenex Magma is a level 3 that lets you add a level 2, and Argenex Turbo is a level 4 that lets you add a level 1. Now, remember Power Planner? He lets you add a level 3 Genex effect monster when normal summoned. So that's 4 searchers for 4 separate levels, of which 3 are limited to their own sub archetype. Wow, so yeah, that is pretty terrible, isn't it? 
However, Konami wanted to circumvent this problem with our Genex Accelerator, which lets you special summon any Genex monster that's added to your hand. Now even though this is an understandably decent effect, especially when compared to the stuff we got before, the problem still lies in the fact that it requires some initial field setup because you need Accelerator already out on the field when you perform the search, and also some of the searches you'll be able to perform do not necessarily involve tuners you would want to have in your deck in the first place. So while this handful of monsters has a decent gadget-like idea around them, they don't exactly have nearly as many plays available to them as gadgets do. However, the combo I so happened to mention a few minutes ago involves something gadgets are very familiar with, the band card ultimate offering. As you might imagine, in combination with the aforementioned Argenex monsters, ultimate offering would allow you to pretty much cycle through your entire monster lineup and vomit out every single synchro in your extra deck, and this is also where cards like Genex Spare and Recycled can actually come into play because, naturally, you would need tuners to make synchro plays. And while that's all fine and dandy, there's an important detail to note here, and that is that this is literally the only tolerable play Genex have available to them. And now that Ultimate Offering is banned, they pretty much lost the only thing they were good at, and saying they were good at it is kinda stretching because even while Offering was legal, it was still an insanely inconsistent combo because, after all, you were banking all your chances on a trap card in a deck filled with a bunch of bricky monsters. Argenex had their 5 minutes of fame while Offering was around, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Which is sad, because looking at the other Argenex monsters, you can see they were kinda on the right track. Argenex Oracle is a level 1 tuner that you can special summon if it's added to your hand by the effect of a Genex monster, but you can only use it for Genex synchros, and as we know so far, and are only about to know more, those aren't exactly the best synchros around. Argenex Overseer is a level 2 tuner that allows you to special summon a level 3 or lower Genex monster from your hand when it's normal summoned or special summoned. Again, decent effect which works with the intended swarming nature of Argenex, but the problem lies in the fact that he's a tuner and you rarely ever want to run low level Genex monsters that are not tuners, so he usually ends up without a target to use his effect on. This is what I'm talking about, you can see the right idea and I think they could have made Genex into a decently formidable synchro spam archetype if they had just taken the job of designing their support cards seriously, but beyond just searching themselves out and focusing on some very inconsistent swarming for synchro plays, our Genex don't exactly do anything. Further adding to that is our Genex Ultimum, a level 4 with 1800 attack, but the effect is somewhat confusing. When it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle two Genex monsters from your graveyard to the deck. I guess they had in mind that this would be used for recycling, but the requirement of having this thing blow up in order to do it makes it very hard to consider running. Maybe if the trigger was the normal summon it would be okay, but still nothing special, but this way it just ends up being really bad recovery. Well, since our Genex were focused on pumping out synchros, it's only natural that they have some synchros of their own as well. Vindicite Argenex is a level 8 with 2400 attack, requires a Genex tuner and one or more non-tuner wind monsters and has the following effect. Your opponent cannot select this card as an attack target. If this card destroys a monster by battle, you can add one Genex monster from your deck to the hand. Well, it's not bad, but the summoning condition combined with the level is obnoxious. You specifically need a Genex tuner and one or most likely more wind monsters to even attempt to summon this thing if you don't get interrupted in the process. It's just not worth the effort. And the last Argenex monster, Locomotion Argenex, is a TERRAIN, BABY! You can't stop the train from coming through! But it's not rank 10, so it's shit. Actually, it's a level 9 with 2500 attack, requires one Genex tuner and one or more non-tuner dark monsters, and when it's synchro summoned, you can take control of the monster your opponent controls with the highest level. Again, this is actually a pretty good effect if we entirely ignore the existence of Xyz monsters and ranks, and I would probably call it the best Genex synchro monster. However... Man, I can't seem to say anything good about Genex without adding however. But yeah, however, it being level 9 and, again, requiring very specific non-tuners makes it a complete chore to summon. And the thing is, if you can actually summon this thing, you're probably winning already, and stealing your opponent's monsters at that point is just rubbing it in their faces. But that's presuming someone can actually win with Genex. And that was the R Genex branch. Serving more as a mediocre remake rather than a reboot, it manages to give a glimpse of what the archetype could have been capable of had the support just been a little less specific and a tad less reliant on an unsearchable continuous trap. Genex combined with R Genex monsters don't exactly become competitive or anything, but you could say they were objectively overall improved. Now, after 28 cards already in the archetype, you would think Konami would either call it quits or keep dishing out support for it until they make it competitive because somebody over there apparently really liked Genex. And you know what they do? They pretty much scrap all of it and make an unholy lore union of Genex and Allies of Justice, aptly named Genex Allies. 
So let's get this blumber fuck over with and start off with John Xella Chemistrer. It's a level 2 tuner that you can discard during either player's turn to change the attribute of a John X monster you control to any other attribute. Now this actually doesn't seem that bad at first considering it's a quick effect, for some reason, and because John X mostly rely on their attributes to make synchro plays. But the thing is, while the card isn't necessarily bad, it's still heavily situational because you'll usually want to save it up for when you want to go into one of the Gen X synchros, and we all know how amazing those are. Again, it's not terrible, but maybe if it could target any monster on the field and change its attribute, it could have actually been a decent hand trap in, I don't know, some format where attributes are relevant. Gen X Ally Solid is a level 2 with the following effect. Once per turn, you can send one face up water Gen X monster you control to the graveyard to draw two cards. Much like the previous monster, this one falls under the tag of would be good if it wasn't so specific. Drawing two cards is always nice, as evidenced by everyone and their mother in the OCG running three pot of cupidity, but this one has a bit too much of a steep requirement to actually be useful. You don't really want to lose Gen X monsters that are already out on the field just so you could draw more Gen X monsters, and while the attribute limitation makes the card even worse, it just has to be there because the card would otherwise just be a pot of greed that uses up your normal summon. Next up is the level 3 Gen X Ally Remote, which basically functions as a replacement for a controller. Once per turn, you can rename a face-up tuner monster to Gen X Controller. With the existence of this, I really don't think there's even a need to run controller anymore. This one has 1800 defense, it works on other tuners if you ever happen to be controlling more than one when playing Gen X, and if you're batshit crazy enough, it's even searchable with Power Planner. Mind you, this isn't a very good level 3 tuner, I mean, after all, we are talking about Gen X here, but for the most part, it's a straight upgrade over controller. And if you're saying it's not because it can be negated, well, I think you need to reevaluate your knowledge of Yu Gi Oh! because nobody's gonna waste a solemn strike on goddamn Gen X Ally remote, you fucking scrub. Gen X Ally Changer is a level 3 with 1200 attack, and once per turn, you can target one monster on the field and change its attribute until the end phase. Oh, look, it's what Chemistar should have been, but slower. Basically, if you're not getting the picture so far, Gen X allies take the attribute-centered nature of vanilla Gen X and attempt to fully make it into their own thing, but as slowly and inefficiently as humanly possible. Changer doesn't, well, change much on this front. It's literally just a button for attribute switching, which eats up your normal summon while you're at it. Back when Gen X allies were released and the game was quite a bit slower than it is nowadays, on a good day you could potentially make use of this thing's effect for synchro plays or certain control effects, but that's as far as it goes. Next up is a card many of you may be familiar with, but not because it made Genex jump to tier 1 or anything. Genex Ally Birdman is a level 3 tuner that can be special summoned from the hand by returning one monster you control to the hand, and if you do, banish this card when it leaves the field. If you return the wind monster by this effect, this card gains 500 attack. So poor Konami's idea behind this thing was probably to force people to use wind Genex monsters to make Birdman into an easy 1900 beater, which is actually a terrible strategy if you're using it for that purpose, but the reason why this card is actually limited is... You guessed it! A fucking FTK! A Blaze Phoenix FTK, if I may add. I'm still baffled at the sheer number of cards on the ban list that are only there because of Blaze Phoenix's FTKs, while the actual Blaze Phoenix is still alive and kicking! Or maybe it's Fusion Gate's fault, I don't know. So, while poor Birdman met with an untimely hit because of a certain other bird, at least he taught Konami to chill out with the self-bouncing cards for a good while. Oh yeah, and did you know Blast Fan was part of this OTK? Good job, buddy, I'm proud you got your 5 minutes of fame. Our first level 4 is Gen X Ally Crusher. It has 1000 attack and 2000 defense, which are actually decent stats, and when you normal summon a monster with this card's attribute, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. See, the problem here is that while you can change Crusher's attribute on the field, Gen X monsters you usually want to run are mostly dark, and you cannot really change the attribute of monsters that are about to be summoned, so Crusher's effect ends up making very little sense. And even if you were playing against a dark-based archetype, this effect is still really slow and inefficient, and the card only ends up being useful as a 2k wall. Gen X Ally Power Cell is a level 4 with 1700 attack, and it gives all other monsters you control with the same attribute 500 attack. You have to understand, much like Turbine, this card came around the time when Konami was still under the impression that attack boosts matter that much, let alone attack boosts from monsters that don't even boost themselves. The funny thing is, if they really wanted us to make the most out of this thing's effect, they would've just made it boost all other Gen X allies, because the current effect is pretty much unusable due to Gen X allies being focused on constantly changing their attributes. Or maybe the goal was to splash this into other archetypes along with something that can change its attribute and give all monsters you control a 500 boost? Hmm, well, if that's the case... The car still sucks ass!
John XLI Vault Cannon is another level 4 with 1700 attack, which allows you to, once per turn, tribute a face-up fire John X monster you control to target one monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and burn your opponent for 400 damage times the level of the destroyed monster. Well, it's definitely less terrible than most other John X allies, but the cost is still pretty damn specific. You need to be controlling this thing as well as another Genex monster which attribute was changed to fire, and that may not sound like much, but just try pulling off this play consistently and you'll see what I'm talking about. Besides, as I already mentioned, cards that get rid of your own Genex monsters' cost confuse me immensely because this is a synchro-based archetype and you really don't want to be wasting your monsters for average burn effects if you're supposed to use them for synchros. Genex Ally Bellflame is yet another level 4 with 1700 attack and has the following effect. Each time a monster you control is sent to the graveyard, place one Genex counter on this card. Each time a card is banished from the opponent's graveyard, place two Genex counters on this card. It gains 100 attack for each Genex counter on the field, and when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, burn your opponent for 300 damage for each Genex counter that was on the card. Okay, so um, what is this supposed to be? Are Genex allies supposed to banish stuff from the opponent's graveyard? Why Genex counters? Where did that come from? Why doesn't this card have anything to do with attribute manipulation? Why is this effect so ungodly awful? I am so confused right now, who came up with this? This effect is so unrelated to anything the archetype does, it would be like Shadol's getting a Gemini monster whose effect says, I don't know, once per turn you can banish one other Shadol monster you control to make the opponent reveal the top 3 cards of their extra deck, then this card gains 100 attack for each. Genex Ally Duradark is a level 4 with 1800 attack and once per turn during your main phase you can target and destroy one monster the opponent controls with the same attribute as this card, but during the turn you activate this effect this card cannot attack. Pretty boring effect honestly, but at least it fits the archetype. Not exactly awful or anything, it's just okay considering the deck's playstyle and standard for effect power. Also, the artwork reminds me of Mega Man, so Duradark gets a pass. The final main deck Genex Ally monster is Reliever. It's a level 5 with 2200 attack. Oh, and if you thought Bellflame didn't make sense, check this shit out! If you negate the activation of an opponent's spell card, trap card or monster effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. And no, to let you know in advance, Genex allies don't have anything related to negating effects, so for all we know, Reliever was actually a misprinted Naturia monster, but somebody at Konami looked at it and went, this is genius, and decided to make it into a thing. What a relief, isn't it? Finally getting to the synchros, we start off with Genex Ally Triarm, a level 6 that requires controller, or you know, remote, and one or more of any non-tuner monsters, thank god. Once per turn you can discard a card, then activate one of these effects depending on the attribute of the non-tuner monster used for its summon. Wind, send one random card from the opponent's hand to the graveyard, water, destroy one spell or trap card on the field, and dark, target one face-up light monster on the field, destroy it and draw one card. While the discard cost is kinda steep, the wind and water effects are okay, but considering the fact that dark is probably the attribute the card will be summoned with the most often, that specific effect is a bit too ally of justice for my taste. It could be worse, but it could definitely be a lot better. The next synchro is the level 7 Genex Ally Triforce, and it requires any Genex tuner and any other non-tuner monster. Good job, it only took you 7 synchros to make a monster that's decently generic. Again, its effects depend on the attribute of the non-tuner monsters used for the summon. Earth, if the card attacks, the opponent cannot activate spells or traps until the end of the damage step. Fire, if it destroys a monster by battle, it burns the opponent equal to the attack of the destroyed monster. And Light, once per turn you can special summon one light monster from your graveyard in face down defense position. Again, the first two effects are pretty cool considering it's obviously a monster focused on attacking, but... What the hell is up with the light effects? Is this supposed to be worm support? Like, are you supposed to run a Genex Tuner in Worms to summon this guy and revive your monsters for flip effects? Because that's the only use I can think of for this thing, since the only relevant light Genex monster is Neutron, which also means this card will most often be summoned with the aforementioned Weird Ass Light effect. And oh my god, we're here. The final Genex monster, as in no more after this one, is the level 8 synchro Genex Ally Axel. Fuck you, Axel Rose! Like Triforce, it requires any Genex tuner and any non-tuner monster and has the following effect. Once per turn you can discard one card to special summon one level 4 or lower machine type monster from your graveyard, that monster's attack is doubled but it cannot attack directly and is banished during the end phase. You know what? This is good! This is a genuinely good effect, surprising pretty much everyone in the audience, I presume. It works both for beatdown as well as continuing synchro plays, both of which the archetype is focused on. 
It's just a shame that it's level 8, because that's a really uncomfortable one for Gen X. Their level 5 monsters are shit, so you'll most likely rely on having 3 monsters on the field whose total levels are exactly 8, and as we know by now, field presence isn't exactly a strong point for Gen X. But then again, what is a strong point for Gen X anyway? Even with our Gen X and Ultimate offering, their consistency is non-existent, the power output is completely miserable, comeback ability is merely a wandering thought for them, they literally have no protection to speak of, and they get curb stomped by almost everything under the sun. This is usually where I do that thing where I say what could have been done to improve the archetype, but... I genuinely don't know where to start. Vanilla Gen X are abysmal in pretty much every aspect, our Gen X without Ultimate offering are basically just gadgets but worse, and Gen X allies... Gen X allies feel like Konami heard people were complaining about the SNN idea of allies of justice being focused on only one attribute, so they went, Oh, you didn't like allies of justice focus on light? Alright, now you get to pick the attributes yourself! You do it if you're so smart, we don't give a shit, fuck you, fuck Kojima, we're Konami, make more pachinko machines! So while I spat and shat on pretty much everything Gen X related in this video, I'll still go ahead and admit there are some archetypes out there that are slightly worse than them, but the reason why I'm calling it the number one most worthless archetype of all time is the sheer amount of them. These are 42 cards. I know I said it before, but you'd think after not one, but after two failures, Konami would stop fucking around with these things and move on to do something else. It's really weird though, this isn't a super popular anime archetype like Heroes or Blackwings, yet they insisted on printing this many cards nobody asked for. What was the reason behind all this? Why are there 42 Gen X cards? Are Gen X actually the meaning of life calculated by Deep Thought? Maybe they are, and if that's the case, I can safely conclude life in this universe is definitely not worth living. That's right, Gen X are just an indirect message from Konami telling you all to off yourselves. What a nice company. Ladies, Mental Giant, Rail Bikes and Rail Cars, thank you for sitting through an entire half an hour of me rambling about crappy cards, and I wish to thank you all for getting me to 1100 subscribers, and if you wanna keep the channel going, be sure to click an ad and subscribe. There might not be many videos in the next two months or so, because college is a bitch, but you can count on Ranked and Yu-Gi-Oh! to come back eventually with more quality content. I'll see you next time.